Adventures of Casey here, and uh, sorry for any bad video. We're having some uh, technical glitches with our recording equipment and sound, so we have to try and film this a little bit differently. But uh, if you've been following us for any minute of time, you know that we've had a, a solar system on our truck for a while, and uh, today's video is going to be Solar 2.0. Um, we've upgraded the solar in our Gen 4 Ram 2500. Um, those of you that have been watching, we've had it for about a year, our old solar system, and that consisted of a uh, Type 31 deep cycle battery that we used to power our refrigerator, freezer, and some other small electronics while we were out and about. And uh, we got about 13 months out of that battery, and right in the middle of a trip, in fact, we were out there in Moab, Utah, our uh, battery finally decided to just tank on us and it wouldn't hold a charge anymore. And part of that was our fault. Uh, there were a few times where we ran that thing down uh, a lot lower than it probably should have been. Um, and it just couldn't hold the charge anymore. So uh, we got back, uh, we bought a spare, went ahead, replaced it, finished our trip. Once we got back, there was a few sales popping up. So we jumped right off the deep end into the lithium world. And uh, we went with the Battleborn heated battery, also a 31. Uh, so it's a, still 100 amp hours. And we're gonna go into that system. We had to make a few changes in our current system to make this uh, work. But uh, we're gonna cover those differences here. Stay tuned. Okay, so the heart of our system, the uh, placement of this, our spare battery, it really didn't change. Um, our mounting and a couple of our hookups did, but the battery's still there. Uh, same battery size, same battery box, still fits where it needs to. Um, one of the things that we had to go ahead and do is our existing mechanical isolator that we had, which you know, uh, allowed our alternator to charge the two batteries in the truck plus this battery back here in the bed. Uh, but at the same time, when the truck was off, would isolate this battery so that even if we ran this thing completely dead, we'd still be able to start the truck. And I am happy to say that, yes, it did function exactly like it should have uh, when, it, when it died on us. Um, unfortunately, lithium batteries require a little bit different of a charging voltage than a lead acid or a gel or other types of batteries. What that means is you cannot just go ahead and hook it directly. You can't mix battery chemistry. So since we're running lead acid up front uh, to go ahead and power the truck, and that's what the alternator is running and what the alternator is outputting for, we cannot go ahead and just keep that. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do on here is we got what's called a DC to DC converter. And it's going to be this one right here. We went with Victron. Um, Really not a whole lot bad to say about them. They're fairly popular. You can find this stuff just about anywhere. The downfall with the Victron DC-DC uh, converter is the fact that it's about four times as much as what we paid for our isolator. But the good news is, is if you're just getting started and just starting a system and you're not sure if you want to go full lithium, you can get one of these DC-DC converters, run it uh, with a lead acid battery, and it will function just fine as well. Um, and then in you upgrade to lithium or you go to a different battery chemistry, it's real easy to program. Everything on it is controllable with an app through Bluetooth. So some of the other things that we had to go ahead and change or that we added is we went ahead and added this smart shunt, which is also made by Victron. We went through and we upgraded all of our system to include our solar controller to Victron. Um, the solar controller we had from Renogy worked fine. In fact, I'm probably going to install that in my RV. It's just I wanted to have, for this truck, I wanted everything to be on one app instead of having to open multiple apps across the board to control or monitor our system. Now, what the shunt does is it actually measures voltage used through the battery. So not only will this tell us uh, what's come in from the solar panel, uh, how many amp hours we've, we've added, but it also tells us what we've subtracted. And we can log on to this at any time through the application on our phone. And if we have a positive number, that means we're generating more power than what we're using. A negative number, then we're taking, you know, taking power out of the battery. And it also gives us a good estimate of how much time is left on the battery at our current rate of usage. And again, everything just, we can go ahead and check that on the Bluetooth, definitely like that. So. The, the two big things that we changed is, is we took out the original mechanical isolator and we added the smart shunt and we added the DC-DC controller. Now, 
the battery that we use here is the Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium battery and we went with the one that actually has a heated function one of the things that kept me away from lithium when I first designed the system was the fact that you cannot charge it when it's cold and we do spend some time up in cold climates uh, you actually have to either warm the battery come up with some kind of heat system you need to come up with something to warm, bring the battery back up to temperature before it will accept a charge and depending on where you are it might not be warm enough on its own that was just something we didn't want to mess with Battleborn recently has come out with a technology that actually uses the battery uses its own power to provide heat once the temperature drops below a user set threshold so um, we actually wired that to a switch and while we we're at it with this system we also winterized our water tank and our water supply lines but that's going to be a whole nother video okay and then this panel it changed a little bit um, from what we had before so we like i mentioned before we went ahead and upgraded our solar controller from the renogy to the victron and a couple of things number one um like I've mentioned more than once, it does allow us to keep track of everything on the same application, which is really, really nice. Two, it actually has the Bluetooth built into it uh, so that I don't have that extra module that I used to have on the side there. Again, we're running a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, the reason that we go with the pure sine wave, it's just better on your sensitive equipment, um, the laptop, the drone batteries, maybe, maybe not. But uh, we do like to have a little bit of you know 110 power while we're out and about we have a small blender that we'll use um, make salsas or I guess margaritas or whatever you want and then if you look right here um, I do have a little battery meter that we have and that's going to show us our percentage or our volts or we can go ahead and we can just turn that off if we want to up above it this is going to be an auxiliary port to add another solar panel um, I know that we have plenty up top and we've never, but if we end up finding ourselves like either parked in the shade or, you know, an extended period where we don't have a lot of sun and then all of a sudden we do, we need to charge it quickly. I have an additional 100 watt portable panel that I can unfold and deploy up to 30 feet away from the truck. And then we have our fuse panel. This controls all of the auxiliary stuff that we've added to the bed, um, our different outlets and everything else. Here on the side of the bed, uh, we have our outlet. That's for our refrigerator freezer, our 12 volt fridge freezer. We have a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter. We have another little voltmeter here so we can keep tabs on everything. And it comes with two USB 3.0s um, to go ahead and keep everything charged. And then over here on the other side, we also have two additional um, cigarette lighter style adapters. So there you go. And then all of this runs our Falcon Overland 75 quart refrigerator freezer. And uh, we've had this thing just over a year. Well, last August was a year. So about a year and three months, year and four months. And uh, it's, I think it's gonna be time to do a review on this coming up. But uh, for the price we, we got this thing for and what they're selling for compared to like the Dometics, we are very happy with it. But that's a whole nother video. So up here on top of our CVT mount hood, we have three 100 watt solar panels mounted up. Um, we have never been in a situation where this was not enough. And in all reality, I probably have one panel too many, but there was room for it on the tent. So we put it on there. So yeah, uh, that's our new solar system. And hopefully it helps you guys out or you know lets you make any decisions that you may have. Again, as always, if you have any questions, just hit us up in the comments. If there's something on this rig that you see that you'd like to see more of, uh, hit me in the comments and I'll try and get a video up for you soon. Thank you.